Joining me in studio is Stephen Saad, Group CEO of Aspen Pharmacare. Thanks very much, Stephen. Well, you must be a happy man today. The market is responding very well to your full re year results for the financial year 2017. A short while ago, and that's at 10.30, the share price up close to 4%. You've stated that the results have been both transformative and testing. Let's start with the, the testing side. What has been most challenging over the last 12 months? I think the, the testing part it goes beyond 12 months. It's, it's been four years. When we did all those big transactions and to try and settle them all down, as I sort of said today, uh, it was a bit like a painter and you sit there with a picture that you've only got in your own mind <laughs> and you're trying to explain it to people that are looking on from behind you. And I felt that you know, the picture was clearer today. And so the tr what has been testing has been taking a largely domestic business or regional business, South African, Australian business effectively, and turning it into a global multinational and to be able to extract the synergies and whether it was the billions of rands we spent in IT and getting our financial systems aligned, but it, I, I think it's just all come together and I think that's what's, uh, that's what's become apparent uh, in these results. Well, again, you've highlighted the synergies and 1.2 mm -hmm. billion rand mm -hmm. of synergies created in the 2017 mm -hmm. period. You're looking at about 500 million rand for the 2018 period. So mm -hmm. it's not over. There, there are more synergies to come. Now, there's more than a billion rand of synergies to come. Um, and, and these are very important because the one thing about these synergies, they've helped us withstand global shocks. And we've had global shocks. You know, if you have you know, 50 or 60 million euros of sales in Russia and, and the ruble halves as it had, you, know, you can lose 25 or 30 million dollars at a gro euros at a gross margin level. Um, we've had Venezuela you know, close on us. <laughs> so it's all of these things you know, that c can happen. It's very important to have something in the back drawer to say, well, listen, I, I can actually weather the shock. And particularly when you're new in a, at a global environment, it's been very important to us. And it's, it's actually a very important demonstration actually of our global capabilities and our ability around manufacturing and supply chain, which in a very price sensitive market uh, is a very important aspect to have and going to be increasing importance, I believe, and going to be increasingly relevant to have that ability to manage a strong supply chain. Do you think the divestments are over? Is that part of the, the transformation of the group finished? I mean, Aspen's di divestments yes, out of Aspen. divestments of any uh, part of the business in any territory. Um, I suppose you can't say no, because you don't know what could happen know. going down the line. I've got to see where we're going to focus. You know, things things are changing, and I think it's fluid in Aspen. You know, we you know we but we've got. You're think, able to manoeuvre as needed. Yeah, we're in a better position now to decide what we should and shouldn't do because we've got a lot more information to hand. We're a lot clearer where we've got, to, and we've delivered mostly. We've delivered on all our promises to the partners, mainly the multinational partners that we had promised, together with you know making sure things like health risks, water risks to cities. We've dealt with environmental health and safety. I know it's not a, it doesn't necessarily show on the bottom line, but it's costly and takes a lot of time. And we, we're now into just the commercial space where we're very, very comfortable. Prospects for the anesthetics business now, obviously, with the GSK and the mm. AstraZeneca anesthetics portfolios. And I love the anesthetics portfolio. I, I really like what it does. You know, I've got to pinch myself sometimes, bro, when I look and say, OK, I'm doing a presentation today. Here's our therapeutic focuses. No, injectable anticoagulants, we're number two globally outside the US. And anesthetics, we're actually number one globally outside the US. And it's a, it's a really good position to be in because it's got a lot of emerging market traction, really pumping in China, um, and people are having more operations and more surgery. And we just a small pr part of that, but people don't really want to compromise on the quality of that particular part of the injection, particularly anaesthetists and specialists, and they, they go with what they trust in. So very excited by the opportunity that anaesthetics uh, offer to Aspen. In the results presentation, you also alluded to further investment into China. Repeatedly, you've stated when we've sat down that that is a huge growth opportunity for the group. You still it, see that. I do. And bear in mind, we've also, we've just bought the other part of the anesthetic still. I'm sure you'll cover that later. But if we just talk China specifically, it's, we've, we've invested heavily. We've taken minus 20% growth rates. We've turned them nearly to plus eight, plus nine. So there's a big turn quite quickly. And we've done the same with the thrombosis portfolio in just six months that we've acquired from GSK. Massive turn in those. Uh, so China is a big opportunity for us. So I would think that maybe by, by the, this time next year, if I'm sitting with you, it may be in our top three or four countries. In the top three. Mm. Australia has been a challenging environment and speci specifically in the nutritional space. Yes. Can you give me a little more clarity about where we're going? So the, the challenges came in the first half and they came in two areas. The Chinese 
uh, tightened up on any just loose exports in, from Australia into China. The result was that there was obviously less sales in Australia. We didn't have a presence in China. And two, because there were less sales, there was a lot more stock in that market and people were forced to dump it, pushing the price down. What we're seeing now in the second half is some stability upon the units, so the units are now stable. The pricing was down about 5%, and that's quite a lot, you know, if you take, if you take you know, a billion rand times 5%, you've lost 50 million rand. So, <laughs> but but it, it's not 25%. Definitely not a drop 20, in the ocean. It was, it was much higher, so that also stabilized. What we did to counter that is that we are now launching directly into China next month. Straight launch into China, got a, we've increased our facilities, capacities in New Zealand fourfold. We've got a facility that's registered for China, and that's a critical, that's a critical uh, tool to have. And uh, so we should be up and registered, and, and, and we're launching in October, we'll be up and registered, and then in time those products that are not registered or haven't met the requirements will fall away. And so sh there should be some gaps in the market at that point. At the beginning of our interview, you mentioned the geographic diversity. Mm. Is it easy to distill the most exciting geography for you at this point? As, at this juncture, given the, the current macroeconomic environment? I, or is, I, is that too difficult to answer? No, I, I think I can, I'll, answer it to you, I'll answer it to you very broadly. <laughs> I think that Aspen is very much an emerging market company. We, we like, and emerge, why? Because you know the, the, there's volume growth in those territories and volume growth is very important to our business model. So we, I'd say the emerging markets are very important to us and I think uh, the United States in time could become important. You know, I announced the, the licensing agreement that we've done with Teva around the, the estrogens. Um, yeah, so I think that's it. I think the anesthetic business is, a, is made, been made particularly exciting. We've done very well, but remember we had compromised margins. Um, because we were effectively sharing profit with AstraZeneca through the royalty and their supply arrangement. So we acquired that supply arrangement. Or was just, I think we've got to pay about just over $550 million up front for that. But you know, if we'd got it for the full year last year, it would have given us some $90 million more, so over a billion rand of operating income. So broadly speaking, from a geographic perspective, you say emerging market play, USA will come into mm. significance down the line. I we, hope, yeah, we we're hope. trying, we're trying, yes. Now, if we talk about the businesses, and again, you mentioned anesthetics, you can see your face <laughs> light up when you talk about this portfolio. <laughs> so are we, to believe, like them all. Well, are we to believe that anesthetics is the portfolio that you're most enthusiastic about, or? Can you give me a little I, I think depth the, there? I think we've got a portfolio called other commercial pharmaceuticals. Mm -hmm. And in there is the sort of domestic businesses. And I think our South African domestic business is a big part of that. Mm -hmm. Love that business. And it's done so, so well. You know, half on half, they're up 29% in revenue and, and even more in profit. They've just done a fantastic job. And I see South Africa as a great growth. But you came point. down hard. We on came South down Africa hard. because exactly. it was underperforming your yes. home ground. We've had extensive conversations yeah. around that. Yeah. Is it all over in terms of the, uh, the transformation in the South African business, the uh, realignment, so to speak, of that business? A and agreed, it is. It is, the, and what we've seen now is sustainable, and the momentum will go into the next half next year. We're in a really good position. You never take anything for granted in business or in life. Um, so is it all over? It's absolutely all over now, and while we, and with the team we've got in place now, it, it should be all over. Uh, but you know, you've got to stay vigilant, but, but I will tell you with, with absolute confidence they're in a great space. I also have to take this opportunity to, to ask you, because of the South African business, obviously we've seen uh, a very challenging macroeconomic environment and a challenging political environment. Has that at all impacted your stance towards South Africa as one of South Africa's leading businessmen? You know, if you, if, uh, if you look at our CapEx spend, we're spending a couple of billion rand more just on building more steriles in South Africa. Now, if you keep looking over your shoulder, waiting to see what someone else may or may not do, you talk about a challenging macroeconomic environment. Yes, it is a very challenging macro, but globally. South Africa is no or more or less, more or less challenged than, than globally macro. The political challenges are a huge distraction. They unfortunately are a distraction, uh, and those do need to be settled. But you know, my view has always been, and it's always been that you know, if we move forward positively, if we invest uh, in the country, and you create jobs, and you know, your focus should be on radical educational transformation. So people have got means. You know, you need access to funding, you also need access to education. But those are the two areas you've got to focus on. And we, the part that we can play, is around bringing high technology environments like anesthetics globally into this country, 
create jobs, create meaningful jobs, well-paying jobs, and create a skill base. But we can all only play a part, but we are very dependent on the pol politicians to do the right thing. Stephen, we always speak about exchange rate fluctuations and mm. the impact on the results, again being highlighted in the results presentation yes. today. But I suppose this is something you have just come to live with, given your geographic diversity. It is, and I think you're going to, you know, it's, it's in all the swings and roundabouts. So when you say, how did currency affect our results? Well, the rand actually strengthened against almost every currency besides, I think, the Brazilian and the Russian currency. The effect on our results was at 600 million rand. That's a lot of, that's a big effect, 600 million rand, all of profit. But, you know, next it swings year, in next year that rand will depreciate and we'll score from it. But, you know, what most importantly is to look through those constant exchange rate results because what they do give you is an operational performance. And that's and why I, you've taken mm. pains to report constant exchange Correct. rates. Correct. I can actually look and say, well, I can't shout at Nigeria, they're down 50% in rands, but they're up 30 in the local, they've done what we've asked them to do in their local currencies. Um, there's only so much I can ask them. And, you've got to, and remember, we're probably globally the largest global multinational, or maybe the only global multinational, that has a dominance of our products in emerging markets. So we're very impacted by what happens in emerging markets currency-wise. You know, Egypt halves. You know, your business just halves there. And it's not half of profit. It's more than half because it's all price. <laughs> you know, just a, so there are massive knocks and impacts from currency. So I could sit here all day. Uh, the passion that you have for the group is tangible, mm. but we are out of time. And at the beginning of the conversation, you said you sometimes feel like a painter trying to explain <laughs> the picture that you're about to put to canvas. Mm. Given the response of the market to this point, as I said, we, we're around about 10.30 uh, a.m. in the morning, two hours after your results presentation. It looks as though the market is catching up to the picture that you are putting to the canvas. I think they're still a long way back. <laughs> well, <laughs> they're still it, looking at our shoulder. At least they're moving in the right direction. Stephen, <laughs> no, thank, thank you so, you so much, much for joining us. Thank you. Stephen Saad is the group CEO of Aspen Pharmacare.